you know, tapping their, tapping their uh, information, all sorts of other stuff, to try and gather information. So is that okay? Some of them might have been a threat to the state. Is it okay to monitor people's phone calls and, and go and track their records and so forth? So you need a warrant, right? And a warrant has to say certain things. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, yeah. So we've, we've drifted from that. But originally the idea was the, the government was very concerned, the, the, the founders were very concerned about arbitrary government power. And they gave the government police power, but they insisted that people be safe in their persons, their homes, and papers and that government needed a warrant, and not just a warrant, but needed details, you know, needed what they were looking for, where it was going to be found, a description of what they expected to find, needed probable cause. So they couldn't just gather all this information and then later hunt for something that might be illegal. We had a STOA topic of, STOA that was criminal justice? No, that was MCFCA. Who was it? Or taxes. It was taxes that year. Um, well, I mention that because uh, there was a lot of monitoring related to that. And, and I, I can't remember the details. Let me, let me move on. OK. Um, so again, your background to your electronic surveillance topic is really the church hearings, the abuse of FBI power under uh, J. Edgar Hoover in his later years. And again, the government is going after protesters and others that are critical of the government. Uh, the Pentagon Papers play a big role in this. The Pentagon Papers, the argument is the federal government was lying about Vietnam. There was certain information they didn't release. Um, one guy got this information from the government and released it to the New York Times. And the New York Times started publishing these secret papers. And that led to uh, a criticism of the government for lying, but it also led to people being concerned about stealing papers illegally and publish them in the New York Times, which is the Snowden story, right? Stuff is illegally secured and published in the newspaper, and the government doesn't like that. And by the way, can you think of people who will be targets for pervasive electronic surveillance over the next school year? Any audience of Young people who will be over and over again Googling certain keywords. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys will be at the center of federal electronic surveillance, not just as your research subject, but as their research subject. They will be researching you as you're researching them. Because when you start to Google these things, they're saying, who are these people who are suddenly tracking down all this information on federal electronic surveillance? And they're meeting once a week in places and talking about stuff we don't know about. And they're holding debate tournaments. What I expect to happen is new volunteer judges will show up at the STOA debate tournaments this year. They won't be connected to parents. They won't be connected to churches. They'll just be community members that are, you know, wanted to help. And they will judge rounds and they'll submit a report after the rounds. And they'll tend to vote for the status quo, I think, rather than reforms. But I'm not sure on that. We had a debate topic years ago on the income tax, on abolishing the income tax. We, the seminar we did in uh, San Jose, they had four people from the IRS show up. Uh, one guy was speaking, two people were speaking, one sat in the audience, and the manager would walk back and forth in the back and talk to him. This is a program we had at Santa Clara University. And they, uh, they didn't want the IRS to be abolished, and they wanted to make their point clear to the debaters. Uh, why that was. OK. Um, so September 11 is the big thing. And so President Bush and the federal security agencies respond uh, with expanded US electronic surveillance. And you can say they're panicked. I don't think I spelled panicked right. I put the K in there. I panicked on not knowing how to spell panic and put an extra letter in. Uh, but they really didn't know. I mean, we had domestic terrorists. We had people flying airplanes around the country, crashing into buildings. It was a huge, huge deal. And nobody knew how many sleeper cells there were in the US, a dozen, a 100, a 1,000. 
So how is the government going to find out? Well, they monitored everything. So basically, President Bush after this, you had the Patriot Act, which they passed, and you know people said, well, we haven't read it yet, but we're, sure, we're confident it's a good thing. And basically, without warrants, the idea was in an emergency, which this was considered, the federal government can do pretty much anything. So the expansion came that. Now, now it's over a decade later. Uh, we've done all this pervasive surveillance. We haven't had uh, terrorists. We've had some terrorist act, but nothing like the 9-11. Now, is that because we're monitoring everything and stopping terrorists? Or is it because, is it for some other reason? But in terms of the history of it, I would argue that's a big, uh, big part of where we are today. What's another terrorist act that led to significant uh, domestic surveillance? What's the biggest terrorist act before 9-11? Yeah. Yeah. I would say the Oklahoma City bombing is key because it's done by uh, a domestic anti-government guy. What was his rationale for doing Oklahoma City? It was on the anniversary of the Waco massacre. The Waco massacre was a religious cult in Waco that was, I don't know what kind of religion they were, maybe they just were a cult cult, but they were basically a whole bunch of people lived in this big area in Waco, and the federal government said they hadn't paid taxes or hadn't done something, and they had to give up, and they refused to. And basically, the federal government went in and killed them all. Killed the women, the children, killed everybody. Uh, and they said they didn't mean to. It was an accident, they, whatever, but a lot of people died. And then they, in Idaho, they shot another guy who was an anti-government guy, was shot by a, a FBI or somebody. So those sorts of acts led to a a right-wing-ish or an anti-government response, and the guy that did the uh, Waco, or the, the guy that did the Oklahoma City bombing did it on the one-year anniversary of Waco as uh, a response. Uh, but the government responded that in a big way, saying, wait a minute, maybe every gun show has a bunch of guys who are plotting to blow up a federal building. People upset about their taxes, people upset about the government, people inflamed by Sarah Palin to attack the state. Uh, we need to protect ourselves, and the only way to do that is to monitor everything. Make sense? So that's part of the fear, and you, you, know, you can understand the fear. Nobody wants to get blown up. Um, this is a study from the Cato Institute. It's 2011. Uh, Julian Sanchez, a former debater from New York University, but basically saying Washington Post passing the Patriot Act uh, both parties complained they didn't quite know what was in it, but it, we had to pass it quickly so government could go out and monitor things and stop another terrorist attack. And you've, I guess the handout has a detailed uh, deal on the Patriot Act. I think that everyone, did they, this group receive that? Or it's for this group? Yeah. Um, one of the challenges in my work is I can talk about the Patriot Act now but a month from now, all the students are going to know more about it than I will. So I have to sort of just refer to it casually. But you need to find out what's in it. And a lot of people said, OK, we did it. It was an emergency. Now it's time to undo it. Uh, these laws should sunset. There should be a natural sunset. In 10 years, the law sunsets unless it's renewed. Because it's not clear that you could get the Patriot Act passed today. It's not clear that you can take it out. But the question is, is it the good law? Does it do what it's supposed to do? Should it be there? A lot of times things happen in emergencies that you, know, you say, OK, it was an emergency. But once the emergency's passed, it's hard to undo those things. Yeah? I just want to say there's an old saying, there's nothing more, um, I think it was the, uh, Hyatt who said this, uh, there's nothing more permanent than a temporary government program. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it sounds like Friedman, but it could be, yeah. It was Friedman, one of them. Yeah. Yeah, the, the challenge is these things start and they, they keep on. They, they, they build a constituency. So these groups, what's that? Yeah, you get it's there and people benefit from it and they want it. 